Um, I think digital PR, what it does is it, it has that EAT feature and helps brands to, to, like you say, dominate the subject or dominate the expertise. And if we can do that, if we can place brands as experts, arguably that's pretty much what the marketing element of SEO. If you could say, SEO, what marketing function do you perform? What we do is we make people experts. You are listening to Power Marketing with Kevin Lee. Kevin and his agency, Did It, have helped thousands of businesses win through superior marketing, as have his books, articles, speaking engagements, and the eMarketing Association Power Marketing Podcasts. Here's Kevin. I'm super excited to be chatting with Andy Holland, um, who sort of focuses on SEO through a digital PR lens for JBH uh, over in the the UK, uh, in Manchester, where my dad was born. So happy to have you on, uh, Andy. Uh, We'll both be at the Brighton SEO Conference in San Diego shortly. So uh, let's start with the session that you're doing. What's the the topic they'll be talking about uh, out of the Brighton SEO Conference? Yeah, thank you so much for the invite and uh, you're great to be here. And uh, yeah, so we're doing a, a topic basically, which is something we did at the last Brighton SEO conference, which is in um, September it was, which is uh, the SEO metric, the new SEO metric that makes SEO 10 times more valuable. But this 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 actual version is as an upgraded or, or improved sequel, it might be, you know, uh, it's a good sequel, you know, a bit like Terminator 2. It's it's it's. It's going to be a better version based on some feedback. Even though the, the talk was very, very well received, the slides had nearly a thousand downloads in the end. And um, so it's it's that it's that talk, and we're going to forward it and push it a little bit more, give people some more information, give people more tactics, and yeah, and hopefully people will love it. Great, great. Well, I look forward to hearing it. Um, we'll just give little teasers here in today's podcast about it. Uh, but I know your your uh, LinkedIn profile talks a lot about uh, d- digital PR and the role that it plays uh, in SEO. And when clients and prospects and friends uh, ask me about future-proofing SEO against the scenario where an LLM like BARD or ChatGPT is actually skipping the SERP and just giving an answer, right? I actually uh, talk to them a lot about digital PR and how digital PR essentially feeds the LLMs exactly the information that it wants to ingest and decide, you know, what the best pizzeria is or what the best SEO tool is or who the best artist is, is of the impressionist type. So that all that stuff is is content that gets ingested uh, by the LLMs. So how did you arrive at the power of uh, digital PR to SEO? What was your journey? That's a, quite an interesting one. So originally I'm a police officer. I was a police officer for 20 years and I started um I, I started at 16 actually under a cadet scheme and then joined as a regular const- a constable at 18 and then about 24 I ended up being a detective in covert policing and I ended up um working in an, it's an intelligence sector and I used to recruit informants and we had our own internal search engine and my job was to go and get content intelligence well it was to infiltrate criminal groups find informants recruit them get intelligence and put that intelligence on an internal search engine build links manually promote that content to, to police agencies because uh, it was a results on payment thing for we didn't the informants didn't get paid our department didn't look good unless we got results so <laughs> we're very much a results focused thing i didn't really know it we didn't really call it seo but that's what we were doing network science and seo i left that started building my own websites and and then i retired from the police on ill health but i got bad asthma and uh, i was 36 and i started freelancing and then started my own agency it grew really well uh did fantastically and then and about 12 just i think it's probably nearly best part of 18 months ago um, somebody I was really struggling to recruit because post pandemic recruitment prices through the roof. And someone said, Hey, do you want to come and run our agency department, our SEO and organic team? And, I, and it was quite a big agency. I said, yes. And I thought well, I'd never done that before. Went in, um, did that, you know, had 70 odd clients, 20, probably about 20 odd staff or something like that. And then um, ran that and then got to see a lot more data on top of all the other experience I'd had over the previous eight, seven or eight years. Um, and all the other stuff, because I was doing SEO as a hobby for t- five, 10 years, probably, before I did it for a career. And then um, what I basically 
sort of realized and sort of seeing um, w around the place was that link building really was quite ineffective, quite still stuck in the guest post era, still producticized, commoditized, struggling. But when you look at actually people that are doing well, it's it's people who are doing real marketing. And although we can't do marketing for everybody, when you know, in, you know, SEO tends to be quite small. It was quite clear to me that digital PR was doing an awful lot of good things with clients. And um, and when I left my last agency, I had a very small digital PR team. Um, I was I was looking around and looking at what my next step would be. And then this opportunity at JVH came up to set up their SEO departments. They work with some very big clients and already have. Um, you know, some very good in-house resources, but they hadn't got like an SEO department itself to take on SEO clients and said, would you come and set that up and grow that for me? And and for me, it was like a win-win because they take care of the links and, you know, we I can do the on-page stuff. And, I, and, uh, and it allowed me to have a very good look at the data around the links that we obtain and what, what happens with them, what happens when we get a, a link, what, what happens when it's two follow, what happens when it's no follow, and you see things like referral traffic, and um, ultimately, it's allowed me to see a lot more data that's given me an insight in, from a, a, quite an unusual thing because I've never really heard of an SEO going into a, into a digital PR agency or PR agency. But um, it's it's allowed me some very unique data, which some of which we'll be talking about at Brighton. And uh, and for me, digital PR, digital publicity, and brand publicity is the future of link building. And I think the quicker people know that and move their budgets towards that direction, the, the faster their results will come. Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent that actually, uh, you know, did it started in, in technical SEO. But we, oh, as we became more of a full service agency, we actually acquired three PR agencies because they understood storytelling and content creation. This is way, way before AI uh, became helpful. But I agree with you that that uh, that, you know, digital PR is, is super powerful. Um, but but I'd love to get your perspective because there's actually a continuum of digital PR that that spans a lot of different areas, right? Because you've got traditional PR, right, which is more like publicity, and then you've got the move into mentions within online only publications, then you've got content sites, you even include potentially influencers if you're not paying them, right? That that might end up end up mentioning a product or a business. And then you've got content syndication strategies, which is you know taking owned and created content that that the brand has and, and syndicating it out and having it live in alternative places. So given that spectrum, you know, how do you advise clients, you know, strategically to allocate content creation resources or to allocate uh, PR efforts into that broad array? Yeah, it, it's it's challenging. I think one you have to be goal specific in terms of you know, for example, um, if we if we split PR into four slices of cake, we've got reactive, where where people you know very traditionally a lot of SEOs now think digital PR is just reactive, jumping on Harrow or things like that, and um, and there's a few different platforms. You've got proactive, where you go out and pitch some data, some stories, some unique insights, some point of view to to journalists, um, and then you've got your hero or your data-led campaigns which is your large data sets which um help people to make sense of the world around them and then you've got brand brand pr which is very much um a case of you know you're not trying to do anything other than get the brand uh, spoken about sometimes that can be very creative we're not we don't really do that but that's like more of a traditional agencies kind of thing you know everything's digital really so brand pr can become it treads into digital things go viral we saw that with a recent campaign with maybelline and the uk did a um I, ai eyelashes on buzzes and trains thing it was all fake and there's a lot of ai uh, brand PR stuff getting out there and Brewdog as well, famous for their brand PR tactics uh, and growth, and, you know, putting, putting, driving a tank up a high street and stuff like that and a big, <laughs> and, you know, things like a big duck on the Thames. And, you know, so so there's a lot of spectrums in PR. Tr traditionally, we focus on well, all of them. Uh, we're more brand focused in relation to online rather than anything that can transport from the physical world into the online world. Um, but, and yeah, it's a case of what's the kind of results you want to get for the kind of budget you have and what's the least failure rate. So majority of people come to us for SEO based digital PR. So they want to use digital PR to get 
increased rankings or maintain rankings and defend those positions. And if they're coming from, from SEO, I'm using the S- digital PR to fuel the SEO. So um, we're not really focused on the brand side in terms of those physical type of things. It's all about what what's going to what's it going to take to get those results. So for our side, there's a lot of, we've got ex-journalists and things in the team and we've got data scientists in the team. And it's about creating the assets and the right approach based on that budget for the clients to try and get them um, the links. And and also depending on the client and the strategies, sometimes we have to be quite creative in terms of trying to get links to category pages. Sometimes it's just about getting some mentions and so, you know, we can end up getting people on TV and things like that because we've been quite creative with the campaigns. And, and yeah, I think in a nutshell, where where it depends on the client budget is what dictates it and also the goals. Everyone wants to get ranked. Sometimes they just don't have the budget. And I think if you follow me on LinkedIn for a while, I, I'm very much about effectiveness of SEO and the value of SEO in terms of um, we can access more budgets if we give better explanations about what we do and the results we have. And the trouble right now is with SEO is that is people have wildly different interpretations of what a result is. And we're seeing that with SaaS sites, which are um, they end up getting ditched because there's no uh, profit in them. And they've, they've, they've gone down certain routes, which are the wrong routes at the wrong time. And, and, and so I'm all about effectiveness. Let's, let's get that right. And I think digital PR fuels that. Yeah. You know, you actually bring up an interesting point in that, you know, um, what with regards to freeing up budgets, right, and being KPI driven, uh, one thing that digital PR brings to the table that that uh, other forms of SEO may not is that the the sort of placement type assets or the creative assets that that get um, that are used as part of the initiative have social media value as well, right? Hmm. And so perhaps you can internally within a with an organization within a brand within a company say well this isn't exclusively for seo we actually get you know we kill multiple birds with the same stone and therefore maybe um you know it, it frees up budget have you found that that is useful w- when you're when you're sort of fighting for internal resources at a brand that that being able to sort of uh deliver more than uh, against one kpi is useful yeah, I mean, we measure things. I don't want to give too. I can't give it away because it'll be. I'll be giving my variety <laughs> metric away. But yeah, so so basically, um, the I was about to. You nearly had me there, right? Yeah, I, 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 I would fold under questioning. Uh, the um, I, I think the reality is, yeah. So most media organisations have large social media assets, be that communities, be that pages. They also got the Google Discover, and I think that's a little bit of a thing that people don't quite understand. SEOs tend, by the very nature of our personalities, a lot are very neural diverse. It's a very much black and white. We're not divergent thinkers. We like to think of things in, in concrete yes or no terms. And being able to actually understand the, the things, how things spread and the potential is actually quite a difficult scenario for a lot of people to understand but journalists are kpi on traffic so if we get a manage to get a journalist speaking about this it's because they think they can get traffic with this content and if that traffic starts to travel starts to do well starts to sign they'll put that content further out to their assets further out to their social media assets sins get syndicated picked up by other agencies and other journalists and we've seen it time and time again and what that does is you end up seeing usually about a 10 to 20 percent lift in brand search often as well now even with mentions, because what happens is if you send out a piece of content gets read, let's just say by 250,000 people, well, 1,000 people, 1,000 of those, you know, tiny percentage will actually be interested enough to go and Google the brand. They'll they'll open up a screen. They'll think, who is this person? Who's this brand? Their curiosity, you know, and um, and that's just nature of people's inquisitive nature uh, to see who's to fact check people, fact check things, things like that, and they go on that, and you end up getting a bit of brand traffic and a bit of brand lift, and and that's really powerful. And we've seen that trans. We had one client that trans- translated into like a six hundred percent increase in sales, you know. So you can get those. Now that's not the goal. The goal is never that. The goal isn't this kind of. 
um, oh, we want to get this in front of everyone's social media audience. But that's the difference between sending out a link via guest post, broken link building, or any of those old tactics that we've used for years. The difference is here, we're trying, we can actually make a difference into the way the, the public are aware of the brand. It doesn't mean they're going to buy from them there and then. That's not always the case. But what happens is this, this link travels. A lot of our links from Digital PR actually end up with links pointing to them because they get referenced by other sites. So we've got, for example, we grabbed a link, um, I think it was about three weeks ago. And that link is um, on a big well-known website. Uh, it's now ranking, generating a thousand visitors a month for the and and you know it's gaining links itself. It's 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 a very very quality page that the company put out there based on an idea that one of our team had. So did did, it, did they do it deliberately for the keywords? I don't think so. I think maybe somebody might have had a little bit of an idea behind that, but. But what you're talking about there is every month a thousand people are exposed to the brand, a thousand people, and it's not much. But if you think about that across scale, the potential is quite quite staggering. Does that happen all the time? No, it's not the objective. The objective is to create the news and to hopefully be referenced as a as a business. And also, you've got that thing where I don't believe. Yeah, I know do followers and no followers. People still talk about them. I don't think Google's lately pushed out their stance particularly hard on it. I know it used to be no followers have no value. I don't buy into that because I've seen it have value. And, and also because of the way that uh, LLMs are now, the way that Google crawls and understands the language, when it sees something, it understands you're an entity and what you are because you've been referenced by a traffic website. The, in, the link gets indexed faster. It gets traffic faster. Those results happen faster for your SEO. So in essence, there's a lot of pros to having a digital PR link building campaign, but it's in comparative to the budget and elsewise of, of, of other people. But it is tough because it's tougher to get links than ever before with digital PR as well. So um, yeah, there's tons of pros. There's very few cons apart from the fact that it's not it's not guaranteed, but it's not buying links. And that's kind of the point, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned the power of having journalists on an SEO team as storytellers and because they they've sort of learned how to craft stories uh, and journalists are a little bit concerned about AI, but others have embraced AI as a tool. So because it, it, it's good for ideation and it sort of can help break a writer's block if they're if they're having writer's block or, you know, are stuck with a client that's in a boring category and they're like, OK, how do I take this boring category and add some some spice to it? So uh, how have you found that that your teams are? Uh, using AI as a tool, but yet maintaining that sort of human curation and human control? Uh, being brutally honest, we've only just started. I, I've been using AI for a long time now from SEO, since 2021 anyway. And like I use AI daily in my in my day job. And um, But the digital PR time, I've only just started to experiment with it and from an ideation point of view. And um, yeah, they're, they're finding it... Um, they're just dabbling with it. I think that's fine. I think I think uh, it will start to become more more used, more enjoyed, and, and we've had some good things from it. Um, but it's just a slow process with AI, and I think um, this people will all get will all get to the same point with AI where we use it, and then people will walk back from it, and people will go back to it, and there's going to be a lot of toing and throwing until eventually. You know, people go to AI as as an ideation tool, as standard as I have. You know, and I think that's going to take a while to get to. But I think SEO, um, particularly, is vulnerable to AI as a sector. Um, I also think there's a lot of dangers in terms of SEO, uh, younger SEOs coming into AI, and because they don't know the job, they're almost like the job they're going to give the job to AI to do but they don't know whether it's good result or bad result because they haven't got that experience so i think ai is going to bring a lot of challenges i think it's going to change the industry i think it's going to make us more effective i think seo it's going to reduce waste i also think you're going to need to retain the experience of seos within sectors i think that's going to end up relating in in pay grades because um, the worst thing that can happen is all the experience leaves SEO and starts freelancing. That's the worst thing because agencies will be based around a very handful of mediocre SEOs. And um, so we've, we've, I think, I think ultimately it's a good thing AI is for everybody. But I think from an SEO perspective, it's it's a very vulnerable, leaves us in a vulnerable position where the industry's got to um, sort itself out quite quickly because at the moment, you know, 
there's, I know um, that many SEOs trying to set themselves niche sites and things like that up. And then I know so many SEOs that are going freelance because it, it, they can earn a, grab a few clients and do quite a lot with very little anymore. You know, you, you don't even need an assistant really for a long time and you can do tons of tasks that would have, you would have had to like pay a lot of money for. So the barrier to entry for SEO is going down. The barrier to skill is going down, but also the people are thinking, oh, do I need an SEO agency? So there's a lot of problems in the sector that AI presents, but I ultimately think it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that. those are really valid points. Um, you had mentioned uh, that uh, an article that was that you guys had either created or gotten placed was in itself getting a bunch of internal links to it, which brings me to another thing I love about digital PR, which is that the more success you have, you might end up with some of your placements ranking in the SERP for the keyword combinations that you'd love to rank for, that the client would love to rank for. And of course, that could be just the brand mention in that placement. It could be a, a no-follow link or it could be a follow link. If it's a no-follow or a follow, you could end up with a bunch of referral traffic. But even if it's just a mention, you're essentially starting to take over the SERP, right? With with your digital PR placements. And so you're, you're you know, got almost multiple bites at the apple. Um, so is is that a big selling point for your team? Like, hey, the more of the SERP we can control for the topics that we'd love to to be relevant for, you know, that's that's a, a KPI we'll look at as well. Yeah, I mean, so I, I from a KPI perspective, and we will take anything we can. Obviously, um, <laughs> I, I I think the reality is um, the, the when I, I'm a big fan of the anchor text, according to the experts at according to the experts in at, you know, and when I see anchor text like that, or even just a mention like that, I love it. I mean, you can't get any more EEAT, can you? If you're surrounded in the sentence with you're called an expert in a journalistic, in a journal, in a high authority blog, which may be probably niche relevant as well. You know, it's not just all about mass media. It's, you know, a lot of the sites we get linked from are industry specific. You're an expert linked in there. So you're expert, the subject you're expert in. And also that's like a great citation. I mean, we would have loved right. for that in the back, you know, and and I'm not we're not Google. We second guess what they do. We can only come out of things. But if I'm <laughs> if I was developing an algorithm that was goal uh, that based around eat, and I had to develop ranking factors, I would be looking for some elements of expertise from the brand and some kind of uh, reference that they are experts in a given subject. So so even if that's not a link, it's a mention of expertise, and I think that's. Um, a really interesting part of digital PR is because what it does is it establishes that expertise and makes you dominant for that subject. And even if that doesn't relate to direct traffic or anything like that, and then and then there's things we don't we don't understand things. It's like legacy websites. Legacy websites are brands which have been around for a long time get away with loads more than a new brand will, and we know that. And you know you'll say why are they ranking like that? They've got tons of fodder links and things like that. Well, okay, they they have but they rank for other things. And I think it was John Mueller who said at Brighton recently, he said, if you see a website that's doing something really badly, but are still ranking, they're doing something else that's good that's better than you. And they're also ranking despite having those bad factors. So the good outweighs the bad almost. And I and I think that's um, to agree what I see that happens with legacy websites. They've got so much media. They've got so much been around for so long, so many features. They've got such an echo on the web. Uh, which is fantastic. And I'll see brands which are very young, which were very little authority ranking above high authority sites, which have been based on buying links and things like that. And, you know, so um, I think digital PR, what it does is it, it has that EAT feature and helps brands to, to, like you say, dominate the subject or dominate the expertise. And if we can do that, if we can place brands as experts, arguably that's pretty much what the marketing element of seo if you could say seo what marketing function do you perform what we do is we make people experts we do it through content on the site and we do it through content on other people's sites and that's the goal and, and i'm not anti-guest blogging in terms of a good quality guest blog i do it all the time i write guest posts for people you know in terms of but it's not done just to gain the link on some random no traffic website or, or a high traffic <laughs> page buried deep within just because it could be commoditized and sold as an seo product no our job is actually to market 
and we're marketers at the end of the day and how can we do marketing in our resources well we can do publicity we can take link budget from doing terrible guest posts and add that to publicity budgets and then what we can do also is we can market the business and use publicity to market that business and that's a different way of looking at seo and a more i think a more advanced futuristic way of looking at seo it's a marketing service this is how we market we market you as experts and we're going to try and get you ranked for your buyer intent keywords to to uh, leverage that. Yeah, and, and uh, clearly the LLMs um, are ingesting all that content as you're doing digital PR, um, uh, SEO focused digital PR. Uh, now, obviously, any any form of PR and content creation and content uh, placement or syndication or pitches to journalists, you know, it's fairly labor intensive, right? So. That means that you know you're you're constrained by a certain number of hours that a person can spend every day, uh, a qualified individual. So when you prioritize, it's sort of in a punch list perspective, like different types of placements, different kinds of placements. Some might include follows, some might include non follows, some purely are citations, etc. You know what are some ways that people should think about? taking their most valuable asset, which is their time, right? Or their team's time and allocating it across the sort of continuing continuum of all the things they could be doing. I think it's very hard for people in digital PR to, who aren't in digital PR to do digital PR. I mean, I, I know there's some great, I, I'm a real fan of Brian Dean's PR course that he brought out, which is essentially what we do. It, 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 but it's, a, it's very hard because um, unless you're a journalist or know what a journalist is, reactive is easy. The journalist pops out Harrow or Twitter and you send a reaction. I mean, it's so easy. And yeah, it might work. Brilliant. But going beyond that and getting stories that scale is very, very different. And that's where the skill comes in. I don't think it makes sense for people to try and do that themselves. I think that makes sense to find digital PRs that can do that. And that's a big challenge because as a sector, it's more in Britain. And I believe that's because one, we've got older media, we've got... um, we've we've got a smaller country and as a result the feedback loop is quite fast you know we've got quite a lot of media outlets not all as many people as are in the u.s so we've been able to see the results of digital pr quite quickly and that's fed in to people saying oh, okay digital pr is a thing and and now it's sort of growing in stature as a subject and people more and more people wanting it but to try and gain the skills of a digital pr agency yourself is a challenge I think you've, you've got to understand journalists quite well and what they went because there is um, the bigger you go with digital PR, the more risk of a campaign. And you can have an amazing campaign that generates hundreds of links and you can have an amazing campaign that generates two. You know, you might get it wrong. There's got to be that risk of failure. But when you look at it from a perspective, I mean, I used to do power pages like Brian Dean style from the, the old days where you'd create a piece of content and the idea is you'd promote it, but hopefully that people would share it and you'd rank and you'd get links for it. You know, the 200 ranking factors being the classic example. And, um, you know, and there was always risk in that approach because, yeah, it was great, it worked well, but the, it lived or died on whether or not the, the people you're sending it to light enough to link it or share it. And, and although that risk was probably smaller compared to a digital PR campaign and the expense of a digital PR campaign, the digital PR campaign have the ability to really drive high quality links. What I'm seeing with the um, the links we get is a single one or two links and have immediate page one rankings. We've seen six links take a category page for a very competitive subject, just six links from, you know, page three to page one for a core subject and some of those you know those links were, were decent time we've had a one link take take a, a page last week all the way up to the top of page one from page bottom of page one so these links have value and can perform i think it's very challenging for somebody to do on their own and um and i think they could waste a lot of money and a lot of effort and time their own resources the Harrow thing is pretty straightforward. There's enough about that online, how, how to do reactive. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think people are better outsourcing it for a digital PR agency if, you, if you've if you got budget because um, everyone's budgets are tight. 
especially in the current economic climate. So you want to reduce the risk of waste and you reduce the risk of risk of waste by hiring, hiring expertise. And that's the only way. So expertise reduce waste and it goes back to the SEO industry and everyone else. Ah, if you if you if you want to burn through twenty four thousand dollars a year hiring SEO, it's not very not charging very much. And chances are you won't get what you want and you'll have wasted twenty four thousand dollars. But you could hire somebody for, for double that or triple that. And yeah, it's more expensive, but it gets you the results. And I think you've got to go down that route of, um, I think we, we need to be in the reduced waste as much as possible. So I think, you, yes, reactive can be done, but also digital PR agencies do it a bit better and a bit more skilled and got relationships with journalists and things. Right, right. Well, you know, one thing that um, people sometimes forget is that uh, YouTube is the second largest search engine. And uh, obviously, it's not typically sort of thought of as a journalistic outlet. <laughs> but at the same time, um, most broadcast entities are snippetizing their stuff and getting it out on YouTube. So you may have a secondary impact when you're doing a broadcast placement. Plus, you have the, the possibility of, of just YouTubers themselves, right? Acting as if they're a broadcaster or a publisher and putting content out there. So, you know, where does video SEO and video content fit into a digital PR strategy typically? It's not something we're typically doing because we're focused on publishing, the publishing meeting. Sorry, do I just grab a cup of water? Very dry today. It's not something we, we, we do in-house in terms of if it happens, it happens. It's not a focus. I think there's an element for that. I know um, Rise at 7 do a lot of TikTok-y stuff and, uh, and working with influencers and things like that. The thing with influencers these days, they're ridiculously expensive. So um, <laughs> And I, I, they can go through a budget like there's no tomorrow. And, and I think that's that's another thing you you... I, I think that's another marketplace. I think from our point of view, we have to be very specific on SEO. The minute you go to brand and you cross into that brand thing and cross into that influencer thing, your whole whole game is slightly different. We're still about the links. We're very much an SEO focused digital PR agency, right. rather than like um, we're just going to go out there and get get TikTok or influencer and things like that. And that's got its place. And, and I'm sure there's plenty of people talking about that online. But I think you've got to. It's it's all about that buyer intent keywords. People want to rank online the keywords they're spending a fortune on on paid search and you've got to 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 grow and to release profit at your business you've got to reduce the dependency on that paid search or make it to the point where your profits from from organic is so vast you can bid on the paid search just to outbid your competitor and still win so i think that's that's the growth model we're about in terms of yeah we'll get the links the links are what matters and anything else is just um extra absolutely so, um, you know, uh, the fun thing about our industry is that every year is super exciting because there's always something new cooking, uh, either algorithm changes or new platforms for coming out. Uh, so what has you excited about the next year? Obviously, AI is in everybody's minds, but what, what, is there anything particular that has you excited about the next year? Uh, yeah, <laughs> let me just I'm very, very dry today. I do apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about next year because um, I think SEO is going through a biggest shift in history. And I have one thing, two, one or two things are going to happen. I was going to burn to the ground, which I doubt. Or two, it's going to be much more in demand. Um, I'm seeing a big shift in relation to a lot of chatter about uh, VC funds not getting what they want, uh, startups failing, marketing effectiveness being a problem. Profit is now the new valuation. Not not the valuation isn't there, it's the profit matters more than anything else. And that's really good for SEO because what we are is a profit enabling channel. You know, we reach more people in paid search than paid search does. And paid search by its definition is, is about reducing reach and increasing ROI of, of your clicks. Whereas organic isn't about that. It's about getting ranked for as many buyer intent keywords as you can to attract the buyers whilst they research the category and are ready to buy, just so you can nudge them your way. And, and if you do that enough and you win, you can double your business literally in a year with good SEO rankings. You know, and who doesn't want that? But the the, the magic is that you're not paying incremental clicks or media spend. So you rank and the future of your business is actually quite safe. So you protect those rankings. So I think more conversations need to be had around why SEO maximizes the profits of business. And that's a big thing I'm on about on LinkedIn all the time. And we need to start talking in words that businesses like, like profit. 
not vanity metrics like traffic. I see so many case studies about traffic where I know that the conversion, where they call them conversions, they're not conversions, they're people signing up for lead magnets. Great. That takes a long time to nurture those businesses, and those businesses will burn through capital like there's no tomorrow. What we should be focused on is getting people ranked for their buyer terms, and that might cost a certain amount of money to achieve, and that means that we might need to have bigger SEO budgets. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. We need to be asking for bigger SEO budgets because that's what's required. We need to have digital PR link building. We need to do more kind of brand publicity. We need to get involved in the marketing aspect of SEO. That requires more time, more effort, more expertise. It requires us to attract more people into the industry, none of which can be done on tiny budgets. But when you're seeing brands spend thousands of pounds a day on PPC and what page search in particular, I mean, when you've seen that, you know the money's there. Those brands get stuck on what we call the performance plateau. It's not my wording, but it's um, some very uh, brilliant marketers wording. The performance plateau where you've reached the point of diminishing returns, you you can't get any better results, so they're stuck. You have to then go and find money to go and invest in organic search or your growth plateaus, and then you get eaten alive by competitors. You get eaten alive by other people coming into the sector in terms of wanting to bid, you get eaten alive by economics, by the cost of living, by inflation, by interest rates, all that. Eat your margins and reduce your profits to the point where you might even be unprofitable if you were before. It's very tough asking for investors for more money when you're actually not making more money. Um, so I think we need to be moving into 2024 conversations about profit, about how SEO releases profit, encourages profit. We need to be able to walk into a boardroom with a CMO and a CFO and have a very logical discussion about how they're going to achieve their growth over the next five years. You know, not about the next 12 months, but the next two year, three year, four year plan. And this is why organic search needs to be part of that. And I think we we are ready to mature as a market, and I think that's where we can go out at. I think we've been pursuing tactics that don't particularly work well or are hard to justify, because if it worked well, everybody would be running around with unicorn startups, and that's not the case. We can <laughs> we know that in the data. So I think tactically we need to mature. I think we need to be revenue-based, and that excites me because uh, I think we need to slow down, think more tactically, get the budgets that allow us to do that and let people understand that SEO is a channel you turn to when you want growth and profits. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And I look forward to uh, seeing the industry evolve in that direction um, because uh, marketers are typically willing to invest in PR, even though PR in its own silo is a very time constrained thing. Whereas the SEO benefits of digital PR have long-term benefits, right? So uh, I think it's a matter of framing the pitch properly uh, internally within organizations to get the proper levels of investment into SEO. So thanks so much, Andy, for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you at the conference. Yeah, likewise. Let's grab a beer. Absolutely. Kevin Lee's Power Marketing is available on all your favorite podcast networks. Kevin loves helping businesses excel at marketing. Having marketing challenges? Just like Santa in the Miracle on 34th Street. If Kevin can't help you, he'll know someone who can. Find him on LinkedIn, subscribe, or follow.